So it's spark charge to the rescue. Let me explain. Some of you may have seen the video I did just last week, an introductory video on this spark charge roadie system. I'm gonna put the link to that video in the description of this video. I explained what this roadie portable DC fast charging system is. It has a variety of uses. One of the uses is roadside assistance. Uh, services like AAA tow truck drivers can have this system and when an electric vehicle owner runs out of charge, it's gonna happen. People run out of gas all the time, so EV owners are gonna miscalculate their destination and run out of charge before they reach their destination. When that happens, they can uh, call roadside assistance, they can come out, give them a quick boost, enough for them to make it either home or to the nearest charging station. So we did that video last week. Funny thing is, a friend of mine who runs an electric vehicle rental service called Plug and Rent here in New Jersey. He saw the video and I actually use his service. You may have seen my Tesla Model Y 70 mile an hour range test last year. That was a vehicle from his fleet that I rented for the day. And about two weeks ago, I rented a Mustang Mach-E from him with the standard range uh, battery, all wheel drive, and I did a 70 mile an hour high range test for inside EVs, and I also did DC fast charging test for this channel. I haven't posted that video yet, but it may be posted by the time I put this video up, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but anyway, Bob saw my video and thought that this was a really neat idea. He actually called me about it, and we talked about it. Funny thing is, today, one of his customers rents a Tesla Model 3 from him and miscalculates. He actually made it to the parking lot where the Tesla supercharger is, but he ran out before the car reached the, the charging station. Now, Bob says he's really close to the supercharger, um, uh, but the, the vehicle shut down because the battery is completely dead, won't turn on even enough for you to put it in neutral and, and, and push it. So he said, you know, do you think you could bring that system that you talked about down and give me a quick boost? So I agreed to do that. Um, he's going to have to agree to give me the next car that I rent from him for free, but I don't think he knows that yet. We'll talk about that when I get down there. So in any event, I'm charging up this battery module. We're going to head out and we're going to do a demonstration of how this roadie system works. A real demonstration, not a fake one, because I'm actually going to be using it to recharge a completely flatline dead Tesla Model 3. Hopefully it works. You might hear a buzzing noise in the background. That's because I'm charging this battery module. This is one battery module for the Spark Charge Roadie system. You could stack up to four batteries with the charger on top. That's how the system works. It's modular, depending on how much energy you need. Um, when you only have one battery though, and the charging module on top, it'll only charge at 10 kilowatts. Once you put on that second module, and then the third or the fourth, it charges at 20 kilowatts. So even though we only need a little bit of energy, I'm gonna bring two battery modules so we get the full 20 kilowatt charge and I only have to stand there for five minutes or so, just enough to power up the Model 3 so he can then drive it over to the supercharger. Um, but the reason why I'm standing here charging this is because one of the things I didn't do in my first video describing this system will show people how the battery modules are recharged. And I did have a couple comments. People asked me, hey, how do you recharge them? So this is the charging unit. You'll see there's a red light on the front. When this gets completely charged, that turns green. These battery modules take about three and a half to four hours to charge from a regular household outlet. This thing's plugged into a regular 120 volt outlet. Uh, and that's how you, that's how you charge it. Uh, and depending on if it's completely dead three to four hours the side of the unit here has a, a light system that's it's like a picture of a battery with four bars so you know if it's a quarter charge 50 percent charge 75 100 percent charge this guy's almost fully charged uh, i want to leave with it fully charged so i figured i'd plug it in now charge it up show people exactly how this works the the charger plugs into the top of the unit here it's kind of like a snap and twist lock uh, and that's it. In a few hours, it's fully charged. This guy was almost fully charged, so I only need to charge it for maybe a half an hour. It'll be fully charged. I'm gonna hop in a Jeep 4xe that I just happened to have on loan this week from Jeep to do some reviews. I actually just did the 
70 mile an hour highway range test with the Jeep 4 by e It's a plug-in hybrid, but we still do the highway range test with those vehicles. That video is up on Inside EVs if you want to check it out. But we're going to use the plug-in hybrid to load up the roadie and rescue a Tesla Model 3. I'm going to check back when we're at the parking lot where the stranded Model 3 is. All right, so I'm here at the mall now looking for my friend. Uh, his customer, he said, pulled in. There he is. He pulled in off the highway and couldn't make it to the superchargers right to our right. It's right across the parking lot. But the car just died and he just pulled it over to the side here. So there's my friend. And let's see what's going on here. So, Bob, what happened here? I could see the superchargers over there. This is, for, 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 for the viewers, this is right off of uh, the highway. And you can hear the planes above us right now super loud because Newark Airport is right over the highway. And evidently, this guy made it to the parking lot, but he couldn't make it over there? No, no, he ran dead. <laughs> he lived 150 yards from the supercharger. <laughs> I see there's some tickets on your windshield. Yeah, only what two, happened with that? Only two tickets. We're parking here <laughs> <Yeah>. illegally. <laughs> so the car's dead. Um, I'm going to unload the spark charge now, roll it over, plug it in. We really don't have to let it charge long because we only have to drive over there, uh, but it won't move at all at this point. Uh, and I was talking to Bob about this. This actually happens more than you would think. He has an all-electric car rental service. He has Teslas. He just got the Mustang Mach-E that I rented last week. So Bob rents EVs and uh, he's got a whole fleet of them. And believe it or not, people do this a lot. They just run out and call them up. They're like, hey, yeah, uh, the car's in a parking lot. It's dead. Uh, my rental's over. <laughs> so so something like this, the spark charge might be worthwhile for you. It's not getting easier with the Mach-E either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, a Tesla does make charging, charging yeah, easy. more superchargers around with Tesla. But yeah. It still happens frequently, all too frequently. Yeah. Well, may, may, maybe our local AAA. <laughs> maybe our local AAA will get one of these spark charge so that you can call we definitely them we need that we need someone we can call to get a car charge so we don't have to tow it there's really no reason to tow this car is i there? know especially uh, imagine calling a tow truck to tow it exactly. there so all right we're gonna we're, we're gonna we're gonna take out the roadie now plug it in and charge it up so i unloaded the spark charge system from my jeep 4x8 you'll notice i brought two battery modules. That's because the Spark Charge roadie system only charges at 10 kilowatts if it has one battery module. If you stack two or more battery modules, it charges at its full capacity of 20 kilowatts. And this is a Chatamo version. This system is available in both Chatamo and CCS1. So I had to get my Chatamo to Tesla adapter out. Uh, and as you can see there from my thumbs up, the system is charging. I did a close up here so you can see the green Tesla symbol blinking in the charge port, meaning the car is actively charging. We only hung out for about 10 minutes just to give it enough. As you can see, the superchargers are in the background. We really didn't have to go far, but uh, after about 10 minutes, we're all charged up and Bob headed over to the superchargers. Okay. We've given him enough juice, and now he is going to make it over to the superchargers. We only had to stay here for like 10 minutes. I mean, actually, after five minutes, I could have unplugged, but I drove all the way down here. I wanted to use the system a little bit. So we charged him up, and he's gonna go over there and fully charge. Um, this was not staged. I know some people are gonna look at it and be like, oh, you know, that's wrong. I'm telling you, uh, my friend Bob called me today and was like, dude, you know, I need that thing that you got. What's it called? And I explained to him the spark charge. And uh, it just shows, here's a perfect example of it. And, you know, we were talking about um, having uh, AAA get these, and he might even consider uh, renting or leasing one from Spark Charge for his fleet of electric vehicles because this happens more than what I would think it would. Um, I guess the rentals that he rents it to, people that really don't know EVs, aren't familiar with the car, they'd be more likely 
to run out of charge because it does happen. He's told me um, he's been doing this for a few years, this car rental uh, business, and uh, it's happened to him a lot. So in any event, he doesn't have to tow it today. He's over there, backed into the supercharger and charging. Um, that's it for our Spark Charge Roadie to the Rescue video. Uh, don't forget, if you like what we're doing here on State of Charge, please click that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge.